Peter King, thank you for your time. Well, good afternoon, Catherine. Statutory net profit up 213% for the half year, 189 for the full year. What were the key drivers of that result? Well, if we stand back and look at the result, the core business did well, but it was broadly flat. Uh, the big driver in the result was uh, impairments or bad debts. So what we've seen is a much better outcome this six months or in this six months than we thought 12 months ago. And we actually had an impairment benefit for the six months, which is the first I can remember in my career at Westpac. You mentioned uh, this impairment cost here. From the same period last year, there was 2.2 billion costs from impairments where unemployment was forecast to be double digit. The housing market was expected to fall off a cliff. This year, the economic conditions have improved uh, no end. So you received that bottom line advantage of $372 million. So should that just be considered as good luck and clever accounting? No, I think last year we, um, we looked into what was a pretty uncertain outlook. So we didn't know how bad the pandemic would be. You're right, unemployment, some of the numbers running around were pretty high. Uh, some of the challenges we were having, uh, potentially gonna have in the business market or the housing market were big. So we provisioned hard. In part, that was because of the new accounting standard for provisioning that makes you look forward. Um, when you're looking forward, you've gotta make some judgments on forecasts. So, so we provisioned hard. Good news is we didn't need it. So not, by not needing it, we could uh, release it. And as you said, that was a benefit uh, for the half. But when I step back and look at the portfolio and uh, virtually every credit metric improved. So we had less stressed loans. We had less mortgage delinquencies. What we wrote off in individually assessed provisions for specific um, companies was lower. What we wrote off in unsecured lending credit cards and personal loans was lower. Uh, and we had a, be a bigger benefit from recoveries. So uh, when I looked at all the metrics in credit, they were better. Okay, if we can talk about net interest margins now, a key profitability indicator. I noticed that they're down four basis points to 2.09% year on year. What's driving that profit squeeze and how will you address that? So margins were down over the year. That's uh, two things, competition for loans. So. Uh, that benefits uh, consumers but a little bit harder for the bank and low interest rates. So low interest rates impact um, our returns on capital and deposits so they were, a, they were a bit of a challenge for us over the 12 months. In the six months uh, they came back a little bit so it was a, a better result um, uh, but it's pretty hard for the banks to manage it when uh, interest rates are low and that's what we've seen around the globe for, for banks. Um, you unveiled today a cost cutting package worth $8 billion to be achieved by 2024, driven by a shift to digitisation, sale of non-core businesses and the simplification of organisation structure. Can you outline this plan briefly and how it will be achieved? So what we've outlined today is uh, in three years time, so FY24, uh, we want to have an organisation of around $8 billion in, in cost. That is lower than today. Uh, and three uh, major levers. First is uh, reducing what we call notables or the, the customer, the remediation that we've had to do in the last couple of years. So improving our controls, fixing our controls so that we don't have as big a notables as what we've had in the last couple of years. Uh, the second one is uh, simplifying our business portfolio. So the sale of our wealth businesses, uh, Pacific Banking, Auto Finance, and also the consolidation of our international operations into Singapore. So simplifying our business. And then the third thing is for the core business of banking, uh, a lot more digitization. Uh, so we see that as, as reducing costs, a lower or smaller head office for the smaller organization will also be part of that program. With that digitization, how many branches do you expect to close and how many jobs do you expect to go? Well, branches are still going to be critical for the organisation as are our call centres, as, as are our bankers. So uh, even though we've got a cost program, we definitely want to have uh, and meet the need of our, our, um, our customers through the different channels. But if we look at the last four years, transaction volumes are now down probably about 40% and we think it'll be similar in the next three years. 98% of our transactions are done outside the branch now, only 2%. And so branch numbers will come down. Uh, we think that'll be more in metro areas as opposed to, to regional areas. So when you say branches down, have you modelled how many will close? Not, we haven't been specific today. What we've said is we think based on current trends that transaction volumes will be down about 40%. That doesn't translate into the number of branches. 
because we'll do things like make branches smaller. It's more about we think the footprint in metro sites will be a, a smaller footprint. If it's a smaller footprint, then will you be looking to redeploy staff in those branches or do you know how many jobs will go? Well, what we do today if, uh, when we close a branch is we look for opportunities. So we have about 3,000 people who naturally uh, leave the company. Our, our uh, attrition rate is about 7% at the moment, 3,000 people. And we'll always look at uh, what other opportunities uh, they have. If we can turn our attention now to housing, new lending for housing surged 49% over the last year. What's the breakup of that with respect to owner occupier and investors? And do you think that this growth will be sustained in the second half? Well, what we actually saw in our portfolio, I've got the, the six monthly numbers in my head, was uh, owner occupied grew and investor shrunk. So we actually saw uh, quite a different dynamic. About two thirds of new lending was owner occupied. And, and so that was what what drove our, our growth in the portfolio. Uh, when we look at uh, the market at the moment, interest only lending's down, investor lending's down, owner occupied's up. A uh, little bit higher in high LVR lending, but it's more first home buyers. So all of that is, I think, good fundamental growth. It's not like we had in previous cycles where we had lots of investor and lots of interest only. So what uh, are you forecasting or what are your expectations for the housing market in the next 12 months and how do you get investors back if indeed you think they will? Well in terms of the market, the housing market itself, 20% uh, growth over the next two years is what our economics team have, have forecasted. A bit more this year. Uh, it was interesting that March we grew probably a bit over 30% annualised, uh, April it's been a bit over 20% annualised. So the market's still uh, growing pretty quickly, frankly, um, uh, and we'll see. For our business, uh, we expect mortgage growth to move from the 4% level to the 6% level. What's the outlook uh, for the year ahead? What are the challenges uh, for Westpac? Well, when we look at the bank, I'd say the capital position is the best it's ever been, liquidity is the best it's ever been, uh, the credit quality is pretty uh, improving, but it's, it's, it's sound. So they're the positives, but one of the reasons all that's happened is low interest rates uh, and plenty of liquidity in the system. That'll be a, a challenge for our margin, as we said before. Uh, finally, Peter, in the uh, briefing today, you said um, today uh, measures are easy to announce, but hard to judge. So what will success look like for Westpac and what will failure look like? In three years time we'll be a simpler bank. So a simpler uh, portfolio will be better risk managed. Uh, and then the other thing is we'll be doing well in our core markets. So mortgages, business lending, deposits, payments, consumer, business, corporate, institutional banking. So that's what we're focused on. Peter King, thank you very much. Thanks for your time, Catherine.